Paris, and Helen. One day, long ago, when the gods mingled in the affairs of men, an argument ensued between three goddesses as to who was more beautiful. As the queen of the immortal gods, it is I who is the most beautiful. My dearest Hera, you may be the queen of the gods, but I am the goddess of wisdom. And wisdom is beauty, and beauty is wisdom. They are one and the same. Nonsense, Hera. I am the goddess of love, and I possess the power of love because I am the most beautiful. Enough! I have a solution to your conundrum. Zeus proposed that a contest should be held to determine who was the most beautiful. Paris, the Prince of Troy, was chosen to judge the contest and would make his decision by awarding Zeus's apple to the winner. Ah, you got away this time, my friend. Wait! Do not eat that apple, for it is from the gods. The gods? Zeus to be precise. Why would Zeus send me an apple? It is the prize that you will award to one of us who you believe to be the most beautiful. It is a great honor, noble Paris. Now, I can save you quite a bit of time. Award the apple to me, and as queen of the gods, I shall give you great power. As a prince, you have power already. Award the apple to me, and I shall grant you great wisdom. Gentle Paris, you are wise beyond your years already. Demonstrate it by giving me the apple, and I shall give to you the love of the most beautiful woman on earth. Yes, you know of whom I speak. Helen of Sparta! But she is already married to King Menelaus. A mere inconvenience, I assure you. And she is Zeus's daughter, an immortal like us. Zeus will not be pleased. I will handle Zeus. Beautiful, isn't she? And she can be all yours for the price of that apple. Maybe this isn't a good idea. If the prophecy about me is true, I fear for her already. Prophecy? Bah! It was nothing more than a dream of your mother's. Troy will not burn by your hand. Or any other. I was shunned by my parents and abandoned to a life as a shepherd because of this dream. How can you be so sure? Because you have since been reinstated as prince and have become Troy's greatest champion. Now I offer you the opportunity Champion the heart of Helen. What do you say? Now, here's how this is going to work. Your Majesty. No formalities needed from you, my good Paris. To what honor does Sparta owe the Prince of Troy? Diplomatic formalities, King Menelaus. And of course, the pleasure of your good company. Glad to hear it. It has been too long. Come, tell me how your father is doing. Ah, my wife. Helen, I have someone I would like you to meet. Good day, Queen Helen. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is... Wait, I shall guess the name of this prince who has come to visit us. Very well. Hmm. Difficulties, my lady? Oh no, good sir. 
Just debating something. What is that? Just how truthful you wish for me to be. Regarding his name? Regarding everything, my king. I have heard tales of a prince far away from Troy who is famous for both his good looks and fashionable style. You are Paris, prince and champion of Troy, am I right? You are quite right, Helen. This is Paris of Troy. The pleasure is all mine, I assure you. Seems there is some truth to what I have heard. <laughs> good. Then a feast we shall throw this evening to welcome Prince Paris. It will be an honor for Troy to grace our table. <laughs> and then the bear stood up and said, No, but I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me never to go bear hunting with you. <laughs> You are quite an extraordinary storyteller, Prince Paris. I thank you, my lady. To Sparta! And to Troy. Forever may their unity last. A dance for the queen? I would be delighted. Who is this one? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should know this. Probably a good idea. Unless... Unless what? Nothing. Never mind. What about this one over here? Unless what? Unless you weren't planning on staying. That's all. And why wouldn't I stay here, Paris? Come away with me, Helen. To Troy. And why would I do that? Because I have loved you more than any other, Helen. But you barely know me. Love has been my companion in your absence, and love recognizes its own. My ship awaits our arrival. Come, and I will show you a love as pure as the dawn and as gentle as the summer rain. Put us to sea, men. Quickly! What is it? I wasn't exactly truthful with you today in Sparta. For you see, I have loved you from afar as well. I didn't know you, but I always felt you. There, next to me. We are destined for each other, my love. Menelaus will never stop looking for me. And when he finds out where I am... Then he will deal with the gods for it is they who have joined us together. You don't know him like I do. What? What is it? Even in the dead of the night, your beauty shines like a beacon to my soul. Tell me about Troy. My queen, are you awake? My lady? Leave no stone!
stone unturned! Your Majesty, these two serving women say they know where to find the Queen. Bring them here! Now back to work. Assemble my war council! Yes, your majesty. Paris! Paris! I found you! Did you now? And why might you be looking for me, Cousin Aelia? I'm not, silly! I am. We need to talk. How can he argue with the reasoning of the gods? For it is Aphrodite, the goddess of love who has brought us to- Enough! Helen is his wife and queen of Sparta. We risk much with King Menelaus and his brother King Agamemnon by not returning her to her rightful home. But father... This is not a negotiation, Paris. Troy can ill afford even the suggestion of conflict. If I may, I sit here listening to mortal men decide the fate of immortal Zeus's daughter. What your father says is true about my husband and his brother. They will not give up so easily. But neither will I. I love your son with all that I am, and I could no more part from him than from my own flesh. As king, I am hesitant to risk a confrontation with Sparta and her allies. But I am even more hesitant to risk the anger of the gods by denying one of their own her heart's desire. <laughs> it appears that I have been overruled in my own kingdom. You are most welcome here, for now and for always. Bring me a messenger. Send word to King Menelaus that divine love will not be so easily intimidated. Helen, now of Troy, will stay. I am trusting your judgment on this, Aphrodite. I will not tolerate another war on account of your meddling. Oh, come now, Zeus. Your daughter has found true love. This is a day of celebration. Let's not talk of silly wars. It is love ill-begotten that will produce untimely fruit. If it produces fruit, then let us pluck it and eat heartily. Test not my patience, Aphrodite. If some harm befalls Helen, it will be you who is plucked from the tree of the gods. Yes, well, let us hope that it doesn't come to that. You may return to Troy. Do you have a message for the king, your majesty? Oh yes, I have a message for your king. One that I shall deliver myself. Fetch my brother! Men of Sparta! Today, we set sail to reclaim that which was stolen from us! When we reach our destination, we will strike swift and sure with no mercy asked for and no mercy given! Achilles and Velocities command our attacks! Now go! Fight for yourselves! Fight for each other! Fight for your king! And fight for Sparta! Control! No army on earth could withstand such a force. No army, but a woman. Yes. And a beautiful woman at that. 
with a face that launched a thousand ships. Well, whoever it is certainly has your physique. Do you think? <laughs> Actually, no, never mind. That's it. Prince Paris. Yes, what is it? My lord, the king requests your presence on the battlements. The battlements? He's set to hurry. Warships? Spartan and Mycenaean warships. There must be a thousand of them. They are demanding we release Helen, or they will unleash the fury of their army. They openly risk war with us for... A woman. I told you he would never stop. You should not be here. I beg to differ, my love. This is exactly where I should be. Be quick. Menelaus and his armies will land within the hour. I didn't want this for you. For us. For Troy. Neither did I, my love. But such is the price of love. I would pay such a price tenfold for another moment in your arms. Paris. I would change the stars of heaven if it would keep us here but another day. Promise me something. Anything. That you will find. No! Don't you say that! You once asked how truthful I wanted you to be. Now I beg it of you. I will not outlast this fight. Nor will Troy. It has been foreseen by my mother long ago, but you. You shall live a long and fruitful life, far from the stench of death and war. Promise me. You will find someone who makes you smile again. I can't. You can, and you will. I have to go. Promise me. Promise me, Helen. I promise. The battle that was joined that day was but the beginning of an even greater conflict, one that would span an entire decade, the Great Trojan War. Eventually, Troy's big and strong wall gave them the advantage of height over the Spartans. The Spartans lost several of their strong soldiers, and this led to Menelaus's army pretending to withdraw a cunning strategical move. Troy was unaware of what was to follow. The Spartan army built a wooden horse in three days and offered it to the Temple of Athena, the goddess of war, in Troy as an amicable end to the war and pretended to go back. The Trojans, now delighted at their victory, took the wooden horse inside as a symbol of their victory and put it outside the temple of Athena as a gift to the goddess. But when night came, Achilles and his men came out of the wooden horse secretly and opened the main doors of Troy. Several lives were lost. Bloodshed like never before. For his immortal love, Helen, Paris gave away his mortal life. 
For an immortal woman, many mortal lives were shed. Helen was apprehended and taken back to Menelaus, leaving behind a massacred and torn down Troy that would not see life for the next few centuries. The love between the immortal daughter of Zeus with the mortal man led to massive destruction. It was the madness in Paris' love that caused all that destruction. But such is a tale of true love, and some love stories are so sad that they leave behind destroyed cities kingdoms, and heart-piercing stories.